Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I've previously raised in this committee, uh, community hospitals across our country have faced significant financial challenges over the years, challenges that were deepened by the pandemic and in some cases are being made even worse by a private equity model that puts profits squarely above our patients and their care. In 2017, Stewart Healthcare, the largest private for-profit health network in the country, purchased Texas Vista Medical Center in San Antonio with the help of private equity. This was a community hospital that served mostly working class population. And while it looked like the acquisition might mean that the hospital would keep its doors open and all of its services available, the purchase allowed a separate company, Medical Properties Trust, to purchase the land and buildings on the hospital's campus so it could charge Steward $5 million in rent each year. Fast forward six years, the st and Stewart announced it was closing Texas Vista because of low Medicaid reimbursement. But it mentioned nothing about the 30 plus million it had to pay in rent to Medical Properties Trust, a company, by the way, whose CEO earned $70 million in salary, bonuses, and stock in the four years following the purchase of Texas Vista's properties. Mr. Chairman, this is what the disastrous reality of private equity in our healthcare system looks like. And the thing is, it's happening again. But this time, families in my district are the ones who are being told that they have to pay the price. Families who receive care at Holy Family Hospital and Neshoba Valley Medical Center, both owned by Steward, were recently notifi notified that their care is now in jeopardy because of the corporation's gross financial negligence that's seeing the company try to shutter four of the nine hospitals they own in Massachusetts. For their reasoning, Steward executives have pointed to, you guessed it, low Medicaid reimbursement rate as the cause for their financial distress. But earlier this month, it was revealed that the company has missed rent payments to an outside landlord that actually owns the property and buildings their facilities operate in. It's looking more and more like this is part of a dangerous steward private equity playbook. Ms. Tripoli. Hospitals have had a rough go of it post-COVID with workforce shortages, supply chain issues, and inflation. Do you have concerns about the increasing role of private equity ownership of community hospitals, particularly this type of purchase structure where a for-profit system purchases a community hospital with a separate firm purchasing land and bu buildings that it operates? I think absolutely. I think we have to be very skeptical of the role of private equity in mergers and acquisitions in the healthcare system in general. Their business model is just incompatible with ensuring the health and financial security of the American people, particularly at the community level. And what we see when private equity comes in, they're they're uh, trying to make their they're cutting costs, they're trying to increase prices. We see quality go down. We see hospital acquired infections go up. We see uh, increasing in falls. We see prices go up, um, and they're trying to look profitable for a resale in th three to five years. Um, and in some instances, as you've just pointed out, we actually see them closing the doors of those centers because the real estate underneath is much more profitable than the institution itself. So we have to be very, very critical and scrutinize. We need a lot more transparency around the role of private equity ownership in the healthcare system right now. That is a giant black box. And we need more data unveiled so that federal and state regulators can uh, have greater scrutiny over the role of private equity in healthcare. Thank you. I mean, when these hospitals are forced to close, like in San Antonio and now across Massachusetts, it's patients who suffer. Um, your testimony, Ms. Tripoli, urges our committee to continue to explore opportunities to improve transparency around the ownership interest of private equity and healthcare corporations. It seems um, doubtful that greater transparency rules alone could slow private equity's penetration of healthcare markets. Can you please elaborate on how we should be thinking about legislating beyond what was included in the House passed Lower Cost, More Transparency Act so that our healthcare system is fully meeting the needs of Americans? I think certainly in terms of the role of PE ownership, the piece about transparency uh, is really, really important. It's a critical first step. There, it is because of how often private equity buys and, and sells within the time period, oftentimes you see systems changing hands of ownership multiple times, and we don't have good insight into how often that is happening. And so that is why we actually need more transparency around the ownership, private equity ownership in healthcare, because that not only will uh, allow us to have a better sense of what the trends are happening in the market around mergers and acquisitions related to private equity, we can identify other types of anti-competitive uh, anti practices that are going on, and we can empower federal and state regulator, regulators with important information to scrutinize the role of private, uh, private equity in healthcare mergers and acquisitions. Very helpful. Thank you so much. I yield back the balance of my time.